starting on a new little reading project. One that I did a version of earlier this year and I thought was really successful and really helpful, which was a try a new chapter kind of concept, but much more brutal in that, like not letting myself just read on in things if I'm not really into them. So I did that originally with my Book of the Month Club TBR backlog. And this time it's kind of just a grab bag of books that I think I just need to make a decision if I'm going to read them or not. And so I'm hoping a try a chapter approach can help me figure that out. And I don't know that I'm gonna be as just like cut it off if I'm not into it because I was trying to be very strict about that with Book of the Month Club TBR when I did that iteration of this video. This time I think I'll let myself decide how much I want to continue on, but I am hoping that this will just be a clarifying exercise of what do I actually want to read. That is one of my overall goals for 2023 is to leave the year with a TBR that feels really fresh to me. So everything that I have in my physical TBR feels exciting to me. I have either a plan to read it or the thought of not getting to it makes me sad. So trying to be really purposeful in moving towards that this year. So I've got 10 books identified and the progress of this is really gonna depend on how many of these I wanna continue with. So. I don't quite know where the course of this video will take me, but let's talk about the books. So first is Last One Out, Shut Off the Lights by Stephanie Swallow. This is a short story collection that I got through a sponsorship I was doing. I am still conceptually interested in this. It is about, like, I think thematically this is about Southern Louisiana. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to see what the voice of the author is like, etc. before I make a decision if I'm going to continue. So I picked that. The other sponsorshipy kind of one I picked is Girl Forgotten by Karen Slaughter. This is the second in a thriller series from her. I did read the first one and had mixed feelings about it. So I want to figure out if I want to keep going in this series by giving this one a try. Then, um, I think most of these, the rest of these are just kind of random. So Death of the Party by Carolyn Hart. I wanna try, so I think that this is an isolation-ish type mystery because it's set at a party and I don't, like I think we do all the sleuthing at this party, but I'm now thinking that it potentially is somewhat cozy which can be kind of hit or miss for me. So I'm wanting to get a sense of the type of book this actually is. Oh, okay, and then this one I think people will have feelings about. My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante. The reason, this is more of a, do I wanna continue in the series kind of thought process? Actually, the next few of these are. Do I wanna actually keep going in the series? So I, unless I just hate, hate what I get into this, I anticipate that I will at least finish this book, but my question is, do I actually want to finish the series. So that is what we're going to be exploring with this. Malice by John Gwen. I've heard such mixed things about this book from my mutuals on social media, and I want to see what their writing is like and if I can get invested in this kind of fantasy, because, you know, it's a little bit more of a kind of traditional basic bitch Europe fantasy. I think it's based on maybe sort of like Viking-ish type mythology. So I just want to see how I do with it and if I actually want to both finish this book and if I want to keep going in the series that it's the beginning of. And then The Extraordinaries by T.J. Klune. Um, I'm curious about this because I've had kind of like mixed, mixed outings with T.J. Klune and this is a beginning of a YA series from him that is I think kind of like superhero-y and uh, yeah I want to see if I like this book, if I like him as a YA author, and if I want to keep going in the series. Okay, and then I picked four books from my wrapped TBR that I knew I wanted to include in this. So let's unwrap these. And if I end up liking these, I'll put this footage into my wrapped vlog that's ongoing. But okay, yeah. So I've, this is another one that got sent to me from the publisher and I've heard just very mixed things about it. So if I can get it out if it's wrapping. The Flip Side by James Bailey. I've just, I don't know, people seem very divided on if this is good or not. 
and I want to find out what my opinion is. So we have this one. This one feels like a hardback. Ah, yes, this is a nonfiction called Vows of Silence. And this is about the um, like scandals in the Catholic Church around uh, priests abusing children. And I just want to get a sense of if this is the kind of book I'm down to read in physical form as opposed to audio. So we'll find out how I do with it as a physical book. And then I'm pretty sure this is the one about network. Yeah, okay. So this is like a, a history of the movie Network, which is one of my all time favorite movies. And I want to get a sense of what the voice is to see again, if it's a kind of nonfiction I would read in physical form. And then last, we've got a Jim Butcher, I'm pretty sure is what this is. Yes, this is the Aeronauts, Aeronauts Windlass. And this one I'm gonna be pretty ruthless about because after I put this into my wrap TBR, several of you pointed out to me, trying not to tear it, several of you pointed out to me that this is the beginning of a series that the sequel has never come out. And this was published I, at least five years ago now, right? Yeah, this came out in 2015. So if we haven't gotten a sequel yet, I have questions about if this will ever continue. So I want to, this is gonna be one where, unless I'm just like sucked in, can't stop reading it, probably this is gonna end up on the chopping block because it is not my truth or my vibe to start series that I am not confident are gonna get finished. That is why I never went past the first book in the Game of Thrones series. If it ever actually gets finished, I may reconsider that decision. But for now, considering I read that first book in tw 2009, the time I wasn't confident, and it has been a full 14 years, I think that there's a new one coming out soon. But anyway, all that to say, I think past Mara was pretty accurate in having skepticism about that. And current Mara only will continue with this if pretty sure we're gonna like it, so. Yeah, that is the 10th book. So I will check back in with you guys once I have finished reading the first chapter or the first like, I don't know, let's call it 50-ish pages, depending on what the chapter situation is in each of these books. Yeah, I'll check back in once I have decided which ones are moving on and which ones are cut. If I decide I'm moving on with all of them, I don't know what we'll do with this video, but let's find out, shall we? So I just finished up the last of my chapter reading whilst lounging in bed with a, a Hastings snuggle. So consider yourself special for getting me to <laughs> abandon a kitty snug. But anyway, interesting set of books here because of the 10 I picked, I'm pretty indifferent about all of them. <laughs> None of them are really popping off for me. Um, and I think I would say six of them are enough of a meh for me that I'm gonna go ahead and DNF them, or they just are not what I'm wanting from that kind of book. Uh, and four I'll keep going with, but I'm gonna tell you it would not surprise me if this ends up being a 100% DNF video. I don't know, let's find out. Okay, so the ones where... Okay, let's start maybe with nonfiction because I'm not going to continue in either of those. So Mad as Hell is really well done and interesting, but it's neither fish nor fowl for me at this point because it's neither sort of like an analysis of the impact of network. Like I'm guessing it might get there eventually, but that's not sort of the overall tone of it yet. Nor is it dishy Hollywood history, which I enjoy. Um, and again, it might end up getting there, but I'm not invested enough to continue to see if that happens. So not bad, but just not really what I was wanting from this particular book. And it looks like I got to page 37. I read the prologue and the first chapter. So DNFing this. Vows of Silence is actually quite good, but 
turns out too intense for what I'm wanting right now. It is going to be getting into the details of two specific priests and their abuse, I think in Louisiana, if I'm remembering rightly, um, and kind of talking about how this was happening with JP2's knowledge. So yeah, I just think it's too much for me at this moment. So I think seems like very well done book. I would potentially seek out something else from him if I could find it in audio. So we'll DNF that. The one of the ones that I'm DNFing that I'm most tempted to continue with, but I'm just trying to be honest with myself that I don't think it's a priority for me or that I'm that enticed. Like, so last out, last one out, Shut Off the Lights by Stephanie Swallow. I could see a world where I read this and there's one or two stories that I really, really love or that the collection as a whole was pretty good, but it's not super connecting with me. I'm not just like really in it. So I think, I don't know, I'm trying to get honest with myself. Like, do I want to spend the time that I have on this planet reading this book? And I think that the answer is no. So I read the first two stories and would not disrecommend this. I would just tell you it didn't click enough with me personally. Keep going, at least in the context of this kind of experiment we're doing. The one then I would say Malice, I think is probably a pretty good version of what it is. But this I think helped me crystallize something about my taste in high fantasy or epic fantasy, which is I need something kind of like grabby about the premise or about the characters or something. I, I think that Lord of the Rings is my one example of what I would describe as basic bitch medieval fantasy that I just love. And I've never loved something that is kind of in that vein again. I mean, I'm trying to think, like I've had okay times in some of them, but the closest I would say is Robin Hobb, but Robin Hobb has something special or something grabby, which in this case to me is just the interconnected nature of the stories and how strong her themes and writing are. That's really what grabs me in that book or in that series. I don't know, I think I struggle with sort of what I would describe, and I'm sure people who just love this genre more would not appreciate this characterization. But for me, what feels like kind of just generic epic fantasy. I did get a pretty good ways into this because I wanted to read from all of the perspectives. So I think I got to chapter like six or seven. So you know, I gave it a good go. And this is this seems competent. We've got in the opening chapter, you know, like a mwahaha deal with the devil, like make me powerful enough to overtake my brother kind of setup. And then we are starting to get into these different perspectives of this young boy. And then this dude who's like a hired gun kind of vibe, but he's got his older brother, he's sort of living in the shadow of like, you know, we're getting some stuff going. I just don't think I am a true blue fantasy reader in the sense of any story like this just will make me happy enough to keep going and commit to a, a series for one thing and also, you know, like I think a 600 page book. I just don't, I, I can't just read one of these without n wanting to be pretty into it. The way that I can keep, actually, as you will see, I can keep going in a mystery or a romance, and even in some nonfiction, I would say, even if I'm not that into it, it's easy enough and I'm enough of a connoisseur of a lot of different types of those genres that can keep going even if they're not, like if I'm pretty sure it's gonna end up being a three star, I still am getting a level of entertainment out of that that makes that investment of time worthwhile. And I think I am not as entertained by just sort of what I would describe as a competent but generic fantasy, a high fantasy novel, in the way that I am in some of those other genres. So anyway, I think I could keep going in something that had something a little more special about it. So if I thought the setting was super cool, or if I really liked the writing style, like actually, here's an example, because I'm re um, I just finished my reread of the blade itself. And now I'm starting into before we are hanged, or before they are hanged, whatever that is, that has something special to me, even though the setting is kind of generic. And so far, the plot doesn't seem super special. I think Glotka as a character is a really compelling hook. 
And then the overall authorial vibe, I think, is different and fun. It's kind of snarky. It's that grim, dark kind of point of view that it's bringing that makes it a little extra hook that ups the entertainment factor enough that I want to keep going in it. And I just don't think this has it. So anyway, I feel like that was a tangent, but this this helped me, I think, kind of admit to myself that I want to be somebody who could just pick up like a random Terry Goodkind or a random, I don't know, like insert John Gwynn, whoever, like, I want to be that kind of fantasy reader, but I'm not. I'm just not. I want like something hooky about the premise. I want something hooky about the magic. I want, you know, themes that I think are fresh and interesting, or an authorial voice that I think is really strong, um, or maybe like a subversion of the genre in some way. That's what I go to, to sci-fi and fantasy for is something a little bit metaphorically more rich. And if I don't think that's what I'm getting, I'm just, it's, I'm just not the girl who can just pick up any high fantasy book, be compelled to read it. Now, you know, if I was on a desert island, this is all I had to read, I'd be perfectly happy to read it. But right here, right now, with all of the books on my TBR that I'm looking at surrounding me, this is just not what I'm gonna pick up. Anyway, I feel like that was a really long tangent, I'm sorry. But I felt like I learned something about myself, so there you go. That's why these, this is why I do these kinds of experiments, because I think they force my brain to think about my reading in a new way that for me is really helpful, so. Um, and then the Aeronauts Windlass wasn't wild about the first few chapters. And then when I think about the fact that this isn't an unfinished series, this is an easy DNF for me. I thought, I don't know, he, he was writing from a female point of view out the gate and I really wasn't into that. And so I don't know. I just don't think this one I think has a better chance of being something that would entertain me because it does, you know, it's kind of got that steampunky element, which to me makes it a little bit more interesting or hooky. Um, <clears throat> but the writing not vibing with me and I'm not going to sign up for a series that's not complete and has no definitive horizon to be completed. Okay. And then the last one that I'm not going to finish is The Flip Side by James Bailey. Of the ones I'm not finishing, this is probably the one I would say I most actively didn't enjoy. I didn't necessarily love the writing tone. And then the premise, which I don't know how I missed that, but the premise is that he's he gets dumped by the woman he thought that he was gonna marry um, when he's proposing to her. He decides from there that he like just doesn't understand life. And so he's just gonna flip a coin to make all of his decisions for a year. Oh. I don't know. I just felt like it was not, it was, it was a contrived in a way that I was not enjoying and I didn't necessarily love the way the, the characters were being described. So eh, I don't know. This, in a different world, this is something I could keep going in and probably end up giving a two or a three star to. But for me, I don't know. I just wasn't, for the, in the, in the confines of this experiment, this definitely was not what I wanted to keep going with. Also, do you want to mention that all four of the wrapped books I pulled for this, I DNF'd. You'll see once we get into the wrapped vlog, once you see the results of it, I'm, I'm having some interesting findings from it. So anyway, let's get to the four that I am going to continue in from, for now. And I'm going to put them in order of what I think I'm most likely to finish. So the one that I think I'm most likely to finish is My Brilliant Friend, because the writing is great. And the prologue hooked me. Like, I want to know what's going on with the prologue because this, the opening is these two older women. One of them is missing and the other, they've been best friends for forever, hence my brilliant friend. <clears throat> I believe that this entire series is following them over the course of their life and their friendship. Um, and the one who is missing had told the one who is not missing that she wanted to just disappear. So I want to know about that. It then switches to the childhood, which I'm just not, I don't know if I'm that interested in. So I could see a world where I finish this book, skip, and then skip to whichever book we find out what's happening with the old lady in the current day. So I don't know, we'll see. But the writing is really nice. And um, yeah, I think this is the one I'm most likely to finish. Followed by Girl Forgotten. There's a very well written um, prologue where in the early 80s, this um, 
pregnant teenage girl is attacked on her prom night. And then we get back to the present day, which is where I stopped, but I was really enjoying what I read of that. So I think this probably will end up being a pretty solid thriller. Um, Death of the Party, I was pleasantly surprised by. And I think that, you know, I don't know if it's gonna get twee, but for now it's not. And it is a convergence on an, on an island, which you guys know I love in a mystery. I'm skeptical because of the cover that of what direction this might end up going in. But for now, we'll see. And then the one that I'm most on the bubble with, even though I think it's really well done, is The Extraordinary by TJ Klune. Um, This was really cute. Like, and this made me laugh out loud. There was a scene where this boy, um, his dad walks in and he sees a naked dude on his computer and he's like, it's time for the sex talk. And it was very wholesome and adorable. Um, just, I thought TJ Klune conveyed the discomfort of a teen having his dad talk to him about condoms very effectively. Um, so that was really cute, but it's giving me the vibes of a YA rom-com. And I just don't love YA romance in general. So I don't know. We'll see. If it ends up, it has some superhero elements. So if it ends up being more that, then I can see a world where I finish this. But yeah. So the four books for this video that we're going to attempt to read are My Brilliant Friend, Girl Forgotten, Death of the Party, and The Extraordinaries. We've got a literary fiction. We've got uh, an adult mystery thriller. We've got a cozy-ish mystery and a YA romance with a fantasy element. So yeah, we'll check in with each of these books once I make some more progress. Alrighty guys, I'm gonna call it on The Extraordinaries. Not because it's bad, it's actually I think a very good version of what it is, which is what I would describe as why contemporary with speculative elements. Yeah, and that's just not for me. Like that's not really my genre. There's not enough speculativeness to draw me in. Uh, I do hope our main character gets with his best friend because I think there's some adorable, you know, chemistry be between those two, but um, aside from that, it's just not for me, but it is a good book. I would recommend it if this is something you're more into, um, but we're gonna DNF this one and move on to the next book. Okay, I'm calling it on this one too. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. I've probably picked this book up and put it down like four times since we last talked. It is an isolated closed circle mystery, but there is something about the way the story is being told that is so dull even it being my all time favorite trope is not holding my attention or causing me to enjoy it. So I think I'm gonna call it, which is, yeah, it feels weird to not finish one of these kinds of books, but I'm supposed to be being honest about my enjoyment and desire to finish these books. And I have to be honest and say, this is low. So we're gonna DNF this one too, man. Am I gonna finish any books in this video? Let's find out. <laughs> Ugh, guys, I'm very sadly starting to think that we may be <laughs> the first vlog I've ever tried to do where I finished zero books because I'm DNFing Girl Forgotten. I did get a good chunk of the way into this one. I'm at page 130 and Karen Slaughter is a really good writer. Like the actual writing of this is quite nice. I just don't like the main character, and it had been a while. So I read, uh, the first book in the series is called Pieces of Her. When it first came out, I read it. And that was my problem in that book too. I was like, the writing is nice, but A, I think that this is, I don't know. There's something that feels very like boomer millennial conflict in this. And as a millennial, I'm not very sympathetic to the boomer side of the equation of, in terms of like what the conflict is. But also I just feel like it's a, a weird kind of like stereotyping of a millennial. I don't know. I just, I don't like the character work and the story is just not fully pulling me in. So I think we're DNFing this too. Am I gonna, okay. So our last book, that we have is my brilliant friend. And I guess maybe I just need to read this no matter what, because it just feels weird to have a vlog where I finish no books. <laughs> also, this is probably the one I was, I liked the best 
and I'm most investing in at least finishing this first book. So <sighs> yikes, guys, I'm trying. I am trying out here, but it is hard. I picked apparently 10 books that truly deserve to be on the chopping block because I am not enjoying them. You guys, I'm so happy to report that I finished a book. One out of 10 is our hit right here. <laughs> that is, wow. Anyway, so I did finish My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferranti and I quite enjoyed it. And I'm glad that this entire concept pushed me to go ahead and start the series. So this is, okay. I told you guys that I'm mostly intrigued by the setup where Lena gets a call that Lila is missing and she knows Lila has always talked about wanting to disappear. And then it's like hard cut back to when we were kids. This is a beautifully observed novel. Uh, I would definitely put this as a building's Roman. It's just a very well done coming of age kind of story. It is, I think what makes this special, at least to me, there are a lot of really beautifully observed little moments. It's not that the writing is super flowery, it's just very well chosen details. Um, and I think the true star of the show is the relationship between these two women. It really is a story about friendship, which I think is kind of unusual. And it's about how complicated any kind of long-term friendship is. I can only speak of my experience as a femme, a woman having other relationships with women. But I do think that the relationships between women are complicated in their own special way. And I think that this captures that really nicely. This has a lot to do with like resentments and who is, what kind of opportunities different people are getting. Um, it is set in post-war, post-World War II Naples. So there's a lot of poverty, a lot of very casual violence. And I think that those elements are portrayed purposefully without a lot of comment for the reader to process the impact for themselves. So I think all in all, this is a really well told story. The final paragraph I thought was such a mic drop to the point where I'm like, do I, I don't know that I need more of this other than I really wanna know what happened to Lila. Like, I think that this reads really well as a standalone apart from that element. So what I would like to hear and I know people who love the series, you're gonna say, you have to read them all. I, I hear you, I get it. I think the chances of me reading four books like this are not great. Like, I don't know that I have an appetite for a full series of this. I do wanna find out what happened to Lila. So if you have read this series and you can restrain yourself from trying to talk me into reading all of it, let me know if there is one of the future books where we find out what happens to Lila and I will read that one because I don't, I can see myself reading two books like this. I don't right now have an appetite to read four books like this. So I know that will upset some of you, but this is Mars reading and Mars rules. <laughs> so anyway, all that to say, I'm really glad that I read this though. I thought this was really, really good. The only reason I wouldn't put it higher is because I think that the characters aside from Lena and Lila are a little underdeveloped. But aside from that, I just, I thought this was great. So I would give this four stars and I'm very glad that I finally read it. <laughs> but I did DNF nine other books. So run through who I would recommend these different books to. Cause I think pretty much all of them I can probably recommend. Uh, Mad as Hell, I think if you are interested in a nonfiction book about the makers of Network, this seems like a pretty solid, you know, history of Hollywood in that respect. Vows of Silence, if you are down for reportage about the sexual abuse of children by two Catholic priests, this seems like it's going to be a very good version of that. If you are a literary fiction kind of girly and the idea of a short story collection about Southern Louisiana life sounds appealing to you, I think this seems very well observed. If you are a true blue ride or die, just chunky big boy fantasy kind of person, note that I said person. I purposely did not gender this to women the way I normally do. I'm observing real time my own assumptions and prejudices about the readership of different books. Okay, let me rephrase that. If you are a chunky big boy kind of fantasy girly, regardless of how you identify, um, <laughs> I 
call everyone curlies on this channel. Uh, I think you could really, really like this. This is just not, I think, as you saw at length, this was a very helpful book for me in terms of coming to grips about who I am as a fantasy reader. But if you're down for some epic fantasy, there's several big chunky books like this. This seems perfectly fine in terms of its writing, etc. This one I'm gonna say I don't recommend only because it's supposed to be the beginning of a series. It has not continued. And I wasn't in love with the writing, like the authorial voice through the characters in this. So this is one I'm actually not gonna recommend unless you're just like ride or die for Jim Butcher or you're just down for anything steampunky fantasy. Uh, similar, I would probably not necessarily recommend The Flip Side by James Bailey. Uh, if you were to like this, I think you would be down with sort of very kind of like Hallmark movie-esque set up to a book, which I'm not necessarily opposed to. Uh, and you'll have to be down kind of with his characterization and writing voice. The Extraordinaries, I definitely recommend if you are cool with YA rom-coms of some kind. That just doesn't tend to be something for me, but I think this is really well written. It had some very cute moments, characters I was into. It's just not my genre. If I had realized this, that was what this really was, I would not have picked this up, but I do think it's a good version of what it is. If you're in the mood for an isolated close circle, like cozy-ish kind of mystery, you can get into this one, sure. I just ended up being kind of bored and just couldn't make progress in it. Uh, and then if you're more into the characters of this than I am, like if you read the first, if you read pieces of her, and you really liked the mother-daughter in that, keep reading in this. Um, or if you're willing to just try like a very high quality police procedurally kind of thriller, sure. I think that Karen Slaughter is a very good writer. And then this, I would just recommend anyone who's interested in, in the uh, description, or if you're curious about the hype, this has been so hyped, I was frankly bracing myself to be very disappointed, and I was not. Like this lived up to the hype for me, to me for the most part. Um, so I'm very delighted to report that. So yeah, this was definitely the hit. And uh, you know, overall part of my goals, I've talked about this this year, is to get to a point where my TBR consists only of books where I'm constantly like, oh, I don't know which one I want to read like that they are all very fresh and exciting to me and um, I am a different reader today than I was even like five years ago so you know this year I feel like is a lot about kind of resetting the table for that so I feel like this was very productive even if I've never had a video that produced the sheer volume of DNFs that I had so uh, constructive sad I didn't have more hits in this but I think overall a, a positive experience and um, yeah, let me know. This is the second one of these videos I've done. I found both of them very helpful. I think you guys like them. If you want me to, to try to get in a third one sometime this year, let me know. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you've got any books that you've had on your chopping block that you're like, ooh, am I gonna read this or not? Let me know what you thought about any of the books that I attempted to read or read in this and what you think about them. And yeah, I think that that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!